Hi, this is Kim with Mom's Creative Moments. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing day three of my 12 layouts for Christmas. And we're going to do a great page, just, just a single page. I know that's unusual for me. People who have watched my channel for a long time will be like, what, one page, what are you doing? But um, this is just a single page. You could easily make it a double page and just do a mirrored image on the other side if you wanted to. Um, but this is gonna be perfect for your family photo for the year. Um, or some, you know, photos of some special people, and I think you're going to love it. It's actually taken from our CM blog, and um, and so it's it's a very pretty page um, using some beautiful papers. Let's check out my workspace and get started. All right, so welcome to my third video. Here's my little icon, number three. Um, <laughs> which I thought would be fun for this year and I haven't even used them yet because I keep forgetting anyway this is our third video in our 12 days of Christmas layouts and this is a one page layout as I mentioned before but you could make this into two pages if you really wanted to um, really easily you would just make a mirror image of this page and maybe add a few more mats and just include photos for it. Um, you can see from the sample that you're looking at that was made by Karen McDermid, I'm not going to say it right, Karen McDermid Rolf, 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 Karen McDermid Rolf. I'm sure Karen will will correct me if I'm wrong about that. I'm so sorry if I butchered your name. Um, she's so sweet. I hope that she won't be too upset with me. Um, this is a she's she's a one of our CM blog contributors and she does a fantastic job with her designs and this was from a few years ago and um, from 2021 actually and it's super cute and used our joy to the world collection so if you have joy to the world you could make one that looks exactly like this I have joy to the world but I thought it would be more fun today to experiment with one of the new um, paper packs that came out if you participated in our um, in the CM Black Friday celebrations that started um, celebration bundles that started at the beginning of November um, then you might have the um, Welcome Gnome collection and that's what I'm going to use today to create this page because I thought it would be just super cute so let's get started and I'm going to show you how we're going to put this together so let me show you what I've got on my on my desktop first of all I have my um, I have some papers that were selected from the Welcome Gnome collection. This cute one with all the mushrooms and on the back of it is the green plaid. And then this cute one with this sort of, um, oh shoot, it just flew out of my head, dadgummit. Um, the name of this pattern. We used to have sweaters when I was growing up that had argyle had this kind of argyle pattern on it and then this has a floral with green on the back but we're going to use the red side today and then I have a piece of white cardstock and a piece of black cardstock and um, you're going to need a chalking pen which I did not get out yet I need to get that out that. so if you have one of the CM chalking pens we're going to use that today a little later and uh, let's see I have the stickers from the welcome gnome collection which we're going to use a few of here and there and I also have the candy cane border maker cartridge um, so we're going to do something fun and special with this and um, so it's going to deviate and may look may look not exactly, I'm sure it will not exactly resemble this, but hopefully it is um, fairly close with just a new, a new flavor, some new ideas. That's what this is about, right? Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to come in here and we're going to cut our black cardstock into a 10 by 10 frame. So let me just remove a couple of these and we'll get to them in just a minute but I'm just gonna set them up here so that they are 
um, a little out of our way. Oh, we're also going to need the custom cutting system with your blue blade and your smallest circle pattern. Okay, so we're just going to set those, I'm going to set those up there so they're just a little out of the way. Grab your CM trimmer and we're going to cut a 10 inch square from this piece of black cardstock. This is going to be the heart of our layout today. So 10 inches that way and we're going to measure 10 inches after we've turned our paper so that we have a 10 inch square. Okay. Now what we're going to do is set those pieces aside and we're going to cut, um, let's see. We're going to grab, oh, my mom, my mom, bear with me here just one second. I'm going to grab my white cardstock, and with my white cardstock, I'm going to cut four strips that are three quarters of an inch. Okay, so four strips. Hmm. Now let me just double check this because she did something slightly different, but. I'm going to do, let's do an inch. We're going to do an inch just in case because we can always cut them down if we need to. But I think, I think an inch is what we need. So I'm going to do four strips that are an inch wide. Here's where we are deviating from Karen's plan just a little bit because she didn't use a border maker cartridge to do what I'm going to do. So we're going to have four one inch strips from the white cardstock. Set that white cardstock aside. Now we're going to set our trimmer just to the side, but don't put it away. We're going to need it some more in just a minute. Okay, we're going to go ahead and grab our red paper. Just setting these pieces over here so that they are still accessible but just not in our work area. Okay, we're going to take our Argyle red, cute red paper. I'm going to put it so that my diamonds are um, vertical in my paper holder for the border maker system. Then I've got my candy cane border maker in here and I'm going to cut or punch down all the way down. Okay. Then I'm going to flip this paper over and I'm going to punch it again. Okay, now we're going to trim this and I want this to be one inch wide. So that it fits right on top of those white. Okay, this is what we're going to do. Sorry, I want the I want the border on either side to be equal. So I'm going to trim off an eighth of an inch on the outside. Okay, so just just lining this up with the right hand cutting line on my trimmer. So the edge of my paper is on that right hand cutting line so that I get just a tiny little sliver off. Then I'm going to slide it all the way over to the one inch mark. Mm, maybe just shy of the one inch mark. Okay, so let's line it up so that the base of our punch, the base of the punched area is on that right hand cutting line. Okay, which is actually going to be 1 16th shy of one inch. So we'll get just a tiny, the tiniest bit of 
white right on the outside edge. See how that works? Just like that. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing to this side. Then we're going to repeat that twice more, or we're going to punch each side. And and then trim it just the same way. Okay, so there's that one. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm going to punch this twice more and I'm gonna speed it up so you don't have to watch the whole thing. All right, so now we've got all the pieces cut for that. We are going to cut mats to go for these three photos right here. Okay, so I'm just going to um, move this over and let's see, we're going to cut, let's see if she's got instructions for that. So I'm going to want a four inch photo to go in each of those larger mats. So I'm going to cut this at four and a quarter inches and I'm going to make two four and a quarter inch squares. That will give me an eighth of an inch mat all the way around my four inch photos. Okay, so there's those two. Then my remaining piece that I have left here is three and a half, roughly three and a half. So I'm going to make that a square as well. You could make it a circle if you want to. She made it hers a circle. I'm going to make mine a square just because I tend to um, have more things that I uh, crop that way rather than cropping them into a circle. All right, so then we are also going to need four small circles. So I'm going to use this uh, remaining piece of red and I'm going to cut 
using our custom cutting system, going to cut four small circles from our smallest round template. And I'm going to use the blue blade, so they're going to be fairly tiny. I'm going to go slowly so that I don't tear the paper. And I'm just going to work my way down the long way of my paper. That way I will be able to use the scrap for a border or something like that later on down the road. So there's my four little buttons that are going to go on each of the four corners of the frame that I'm going to create. Okay, now one thing that we didn't do that I probably should have started with so that we could have put our trimmer away is we need to gut this piece of paper so that we can use it um, to its maximum efficiency, right? We don't want to waste anything with this beautiful, cute, cute, cute paper. So what I want, I have a 10 by 10 square that's going to go on top of it. So I want this border to be at least two inches wide, but two inches is going to give me a perfect exact frame. And if I, um, which, which actually would be okay. I'm just trying to think. Actually, if we did a one and a half inch frame, this would go in the center and then this will go around to fill in that gap. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a one and a half inch frame. So I'm going to line my paper up at one and a half inches on the right hand side here. Then I'm going to grab a couple of my black clips so that I can set them and keep my blade from going too far. So I want it to stop at, at the one and a half inch mark. So I'm going to put my clip at the half inch mark right here. The edge of my clip is at the half inch mark so that when my blade comes up here, it stops at one and a half inches. All right, then I'm going to get another clip and I'm going to put it down here so that my blade stops at 10 and a half inches, I'm going to put this clip right here at 11 and a half inches. Okay, so that when it comes this way, it stops at 10 and a half inches. And I'm going to cut each side after placing the edge here at the one and a half inch mark. That's going to ensure that my frame is the same all the way around. So I'm just rotating it. It doesn't matter whether you rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise, as long as you go the same way all the way around your paper. And then you get this piece that you can save and use on another layout. See how that works? All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm, I need a base sheet because I cut this this way. So I'm going to grab one of my lightweight top sheets that I've saved from other paper packs. Here's one. So this is just going to be my quick base sheet. I'm going to adhere this on. Let me grab my permanent adhesive. Ah, kind of caught me there. And we're just going to start some assembly and we're going to have to stop and do a couple of things, but this is going to be fun. I'm excited to see how this comes out. Okay, so we're going to just adhere this right flush with the edges of this paper. If I was building this directly on my page, I wouldn't need the white sheet, but because I don't know yet where I'm going to use this in my album, I am going to build this on this base sheet so that I can easily adhere it into my album later. 
All right. Now this piece is going to fit right in the middle. And I thought I was going to have a gap. I don't have a gap. So actually, we could have put that right on top. Hmm. My bad. All right, well, that's okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and adhere this on top. This is what I get for not reading through Karen's instructions all of the way. I freely admit I am bad about that because I feel like I can kind of interpret how things are done most of the time without reading through all the directions. And then sometimes I bite off my nose despite my face that way. Have you ever done that? It's not intentional. And it's not for lack of respect or anything like that. It's just, I get excited and I want to put it together. So I'm just centering the black in the middle there. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, turn my attention for a moment to these. So we're going to go ahead and use our repositionable adhesive that's in here, the green one. And I'm going to just kind of go down here a few, every few spaces, kind of on the wider spaces. And we're going to add repositionable adhesive there and then going to place this right in the center of that white strip so that you have as even a strip of white on the very outside as possible. Be careful as you guide it down. You maintain that, that um, evenness as much as you can. Okay, so we are gonna have four strips that look just like that. So now we need to trim these down just a little bit. Let me just double check Karen's measurements so that I'm not getting too crazy. So these need to be 11 and a quarter inches long. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab these and cut three quarters of an inch off the end of each one. I'm going to move my <coughs> remove my clips. Stick them back up here. And we're just going to cut three quarters of an inch off each end. And you know what I'm thinking while I'm doing this is that we need to cut a couple of white circles. One, two, three. This is the fourth one. Okay. I'm going to grab grab my circle maker and I'm going to grab my green blade and I'm going to grab that white cardstock that I used just a little bit extra and we're going to cut four of these using the green blade so that they are just a little bit larger than the buttons that we've already made. I think these will be okay. They, may have, they might be a little bit too big. Let's double check it and see. OK, 
because we made our strips just a little bit bigger, I think these will actually be just fine. Okay. Oh, I made five. <laughs> Didn't mean to make five, but I did. I was not paying attention. Okay. So now I'm going to take my repositionable adhesive and I'm going to just put a little bit on there and add these to the center. Hoping that these won't be too big. Guess we'll find out. <laughs> And got a little bit squished so maybe that's why I made five to atone for one that shifted okay so and we've got our four little buttons we can come back over here and let me show you the pattern again here's our pattern Okay, so we're going to take each one of these and we're going to lay them on here, like so. And these will go across here, these will go across here, just like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and adhere these on here. Okay, when I stick these down, I'm just centering them on the page and making sure that the outer edge of my candy cane stripe is right along the edge of the black. Okay, so right out here. So you end up with about three eighths of an inch roughly on of designer paper showing on either end. Okay, so just like that. Then we're going to take each one of our little buttons and we're going to stick them right here in the corner. And I'm going to use some foam squares to pop them up so that they are lifted off the page a little bit for some definition there. So these are going to go right here in the middle. And I'm just making those diamonds point towards the corner of the paper. So they're all going to be slightly different, but that's okay. So whatever corner it's closest to, that's the one have these little strays. When I use my circle cutter, I end up with, no matter how careful I am, I end up with just a tiny little hair of a paper at my start-stop point. 
I need to learn or figure out a good way to keep that from happening. I have not in all these years figured it out. Okay, so now we have our buttons on. Yay, that's awesome. So now, if you can envision it, we've got our two larger mats that are going to go out kind of to the outside here. I'm going to tuck them slightly underneath the buttons at the bottom, right? And then we've got our one that's going to go in the middle. Now you can see why putting, making this one a circle would actually be really cute. And, um, and you certainly can do whatever makes you happy with that, okay? So I'm going to just put these down temporarily. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of temporary adhesive, repositionable adhesive on there so that these stay where I want them to stay. So that we don't have them shifting around, and and then I can come back in when I have my photos and adjust these as I need to. Okay, so those are going to go like that. Now, um, your title that's going to go across the top here, we're going to use the chalking pen for. Have you ever used the chalking pen? The chalking pen is not something that most of us use every day for certain. Um, so it's kind of, um, it's a more specialty item, I guess you could say. I'm looking for my scraps just so that I can show you a little bit more about it. What did I do with those? There. Yeah. So these are the scraps that I used when I cut off the, um, pieces of black from there. You'll notice when you use your chalking pen, you have two different sized lines that you can make. And so depending on what you would like to write as your title, you can um, you can dress it up or dress it down by making the lines fatter or slimmer. The thing about the chalking pen that's unique is you don't necessarily, you can't necessarily see where you're writing. So I'm um, just drew an M right there. And you can see how it's already starting to lighten up, which is awesome. But sometimes it can be a little bit more challenging because you don't see it lighten so quickly. So just be patient with it. It's one of those things kind of like kind of like the lemon juice that maybe you grew up using to make um, mystery notes that appeared with heat, that kind of thing. That, think of it that way. That's kind of what this is about. So we're going to write our title on the black paper up here and it's going to appear and some lines may appear darker and some may appear lighter and that's why when you when you see Karen's example here you can see how some of it is darker and some of it is a little bit faded looking okay it's the chalkboard effect and um, depending on whether you use the thick line part of the pen or the thin lined part of the pen and how hard you press will kind of determine how dark of a line you get when you write. I'm going to put my embellishments on first and then write my title so that I know where the embellishments need to go. So I decided that it would be super fun to use the Christmas tree and these presents and snowflakes that are up here. And maybe we'll put throw in a mushroom or two, I don't know. But, um, and I don't have any little gnomes to go on this page, but we could certainly use, let's see. 
I was thinking we could use num for the holidays, but if we're going to be writing our title, we probably don't want to use that on this particular page. So let's see. We could just use Winter Wonderland with our tree. I'm going to use Winter Wonderland with some presents and some snowflakes. So we're going to just kind of add these presents down here at the base of the of the wording. Maybe. And we'll add our tree down here with another present and a snowflake. Let's see. I'm sort of making this up as I go, so bear with me here. So I'm going to use these snowflakes. And we'll just sort of pop those up or put those kind of next to. Okay. Foam squares are my friend. Foam squares are my friend. <clears throat> so even if you don't like gnomes, if you happen to have this, you know, you could still definitely use this for embellishing and making a cute cute page so I'm going to stick that there and grab this other large snowflake the snowflakes are pretty delicate on here okay that way I can make some chalk um, impressions or, or dots or something around that. Then we're going to use the Christmas tree here and this other present. So give me a second here. We're going to pop this Christmas tree up. Down here at the bottom. Like that. Okay, and we're going to stick the pre this last present down there with it. So I'm going to put a foam square on the back of that guy too. Okay, just like that. And a little snowflake on there. And I don't see any other wintry type of stickers on here. So we're going to just call that good. And then we're going to use our chalking pen. And if you'd like, you could put some light pencil marks across here so that you know what's level and what's not so that you can keep your, <clears throat> keep your letters right where you want them to be. I'm just going to say, hmm, what's your wonderland? Let's see. I'm just going to write Merry Christmas. So I'm going to start here.
Mary. Merry Christmas. Okay, then I'm gonna come back in here with my skinny part of this marker and just do some little cross hatching on the ends of my letters. Just going to add a very thin line down the straight lines for that and then down the inside for this one. Just to kind of emphasize that first letter. Maybe what I'll do is draw a snowflake over here, which is maybe easier said than done because I am not a snowflake drawer. But we'll do like that, and then like this, so that we kind of match the design of these other snowflakes. And then we'll come over here and just draw some dots around our snowflakes. And just some little three dots around our presents. down here and do the same thing and just do a little dot around my snowflake and some three dots around my three dot clusters around my little Christmas tree and then I believe this page is done super cute that's a fun one to put together and didn't take very long either. So here's our sample. This is Karen's. She did a fantastic job on hers. It looks lovely. And here's mine using a different set of papers and with a couple of different ideas just to give you a, a new take on it. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope that you've had fun putting this together and I hope that it will um, look gorgeous in your album your Christmas and holiday album. Until next time, I hope you have many more creative moments. Have a great day.